Okay. Hi guys, I'm Marin. Are you my name? Yeah. Oh, hi. Awesome. What's your name? Patty. Oh, okay. Yeah, your iPad's here. I know. Nice to meet you. So I'm a bio major. Um, it's my second year here. And I was, uh, it was actually in UMMP freshman year. I was in my team, just like you guys. So, yeah. Um, my name is Jennifer Blasco. I'm a fourth year criminology and law major. I'm currently applying to law school. And I was a mentee as well my freshman year. Oh, that was in your shoes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> my name is Manny. I'm a second year political science major in the pre metro. Hello, everybody. My name is Tommy. I'm a senior studying journalism. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Alan, and I am a third year human nutrition pre med student. I'll introduce myself as well. I'm Laura. Um, I'm actually a graduate student here. <coughs> I'm the program manager for UMMP, and so I'm here with these lovely folks today. Do you okay. have, oh, go ahead. Um, How do you want to run this? Um, so I think we should first see if you guys have questions, and then we can yeah. see too. Yeah. This is going to be very informal. <laughs> yeah, feel free to just ask. Yeah, yeah. 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 Academic or not, like extracurricular or whatever you just want. Okay, um, for the pre med folks, do I really need to do research? Do I have to? It depends on the school that you plan on applying to. Depends on um, is research a good thing to have on your resume? Yes. Is it necessary or required? A lot of people <coughs> say no. But again, it's one of those things that it looks good. Do you, if you're actively involved in other things and you have strong points in your application, then they might, you know, not say, oh, they didn't do research. But if you aren't very active and you didn't do research, then a lot of med schools will ask, like, what mm -hmm. extracurriculars did you actually do in college? So it's kind of like a, it's not necessary, but it is a good thing to do. Like, most of your med school applications are it really depends because um, it depends on the school, it depends on what they're looking for, and so it varies from school to school. I mean, going off of that, I've um, I went to a panel that was just it was for pre med students, and it was like a eight people panel, and then two people out of the panel they didn't do research and they still got into med school. So it's not like like Alan said, it's kind of those things that's not required, but they still want you to do. It's like an unofficially required thing for you to do. It's just based on the competition. Like it's not like with everyone else doing it, you know, you just kind of try and keep up. So obviously if you have like really great other things that you're involved in, then, you know, that doesn't make sense to be you. Well, even if you're not pre-med, I recommend doing research because you are at UF and UF is an R1, I think they call it, which is, it's a research institution and we really push research. We, I mean, maybe the next cure, to, like the cure to cancer might come out of this or something. So it's definitely something that you want to get involved in. And, you know, I think professors will ask you or like ask you to apply to work in their laboratory. And it's definitely something that said that you want to experience while in undergrad. And it is a good experience, um, whether you're looking for clinical research, where you're doing research with people, um, or whether you're doing more of like the lab Art research with dealing with like cells and more lab techniques. Um, there's a lot of different research opportunities on campus, so you really just have to find a topic or a field that you're interested in and start asking around and get involved. Um, and it's good to it's a good experience too because you learn to work with others and um, you might even get your own project in the lab and you can get a lot of experience that way on how that side of medicine works, the research side, because that's one thing that med school does look at, is to see if you've had both um, clinical, kind of like volunteer shadowing experience, as well as like the research aspect of medicine as well. So that's another reason why they like to see it. And if you do plan on doing research, do something that you like. There's, there's, a, there's a class called Science for Life, it's a one credit class, um, and it helps you get research. And so basically every week you get three presenters that come in to talk about what their research is on. And you can get such a variety of research. You'll get people researching on bats all the way to mitochondrial cells. So definitely pick something that you like because maybe you'll be asked on it on 
like people when you apply to medical school. So make sure you find something that you really like. And it doesn't have to be, it could be something outside of medical school. Like the panel that I went to, someone did their research in anthropology. So do something you like. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just because you're like a medical, like a pre-med mm -hmm. student. It doesn't have to mean you have to do, um, yeah. I do psychology and law research. It's definitely not what you think of when you think of research, but it's still important to conduct. For example, we, we study how people m make mistaken identifications when they, when they see a crime being committed. And like that's important because that affects someone's life, someone who is being a, accused of a crime. So whether you're pre-med or just want to go to graduate school, research is going to help you. You gain important analytical skills through research and it'll help you no matter what you decide to do after undergrad. And there might also be um, travel opportunities. Um, there's one biology teacher I know that actually does research in Africa every summer and so he actually takes students, um, even undergrads, and he uh, recruits students and they all go out for a summer in Africa and research. Um, I think it's Akasha trees and like the ant um, ecology. It's very interesting. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of opportunities. You can go across country, present your projects, or go to other countries and do research there. So there's definitely a lot of different fields that you could get into if you're interested. And also, if you do research, you might identify what you do want and what do not want in a career. So, for example, oh, I'm researching about stem cells. Well, that's really interesting. I think I might want to become a future researcher in stem cells. Or no, stem cells is too blind. I don't want to do that in the future. It also identifies your passion in life. So just, so if, I'm not pre-med or anything, but if I were in your case, I would try to tack, tack on as many student activities as possible until I become uncomfortable. That's how you go about it. Not to harp on the research note any longer, <laughs> but um, any type of opportunity where you can work closely with a faculty member or closely with a professor is a really great opportunity because then they'll get to know you very well on a level where they'll be able to write you a strong letter of recommendation, which that is something that will really help you get into med school or get into graduate school if you plan on going beyond a bachelor's degree. So do you guys have any other questions? Um, specifically to your type of research, mm -hmm. sorry to continue this, but like, how did you find those opportunities? I know there's a lot more available for like, the science research. Um, I actually found out about it uh, through a class that I took. It's actually a required criminology course, and then the professor at the end of a semester will extend the application to everyone and they'll, she'll ask everyone to who is interested to apply to become a research assistant in her lab, and you just apply, and then you hear back. So, and, and also you can look at the certain departments that you're interested, like for example, if you're interested in criminology, if you're interested in anthropology, all of these graduate students and professors conduct research, and you can, and it says it on their website what research they do, and if, it, if they're researching something that interests you, you can always just contact them, their, their information is online, and tell them that you're interested in helping them conduct the research as a research assistant. Uh, on the same line for like um, the people who are pre-med for research, um, when you approach, like when if you email a professor saying, oh, I want to do research, is it okay? Because like we're freshmen, so we don't, I don't have any like backup knowledge, like I'm just learning my science skills and all that stuff, so is it still okay to just say I'm like interested in working? Yeah, in I mean, I did research in my freshman year. Like I literally emailed summer, senior year. So, I mean, I obviously did not have any research skills, but it's, it's a lot of money on the job, so, you know, you just have to be professional, obviously, but I'm assuming, you know, like, you just have to be professional, and you have to make sure that you've read something about their work before you just say, yeah, I want to, you know, just do research with you. Make sure you read, that there's a lot of papers online, like, readily available, so make sure you read something of theirs, so you know what they do, so you can, you know, have a conversation with them. But other than that, like, you don't have to be a pro at, like, lab skills or anything. And one thing, one thing they do like is that because you're a freshman or sophomore, um, they actually like that because once they accept those students, they can actually teach you and you'll be there for a few years to work with them. Whereas if you're a senior and you're only there for a year, it's hard to train them and then get them 
you know, started on a project and then they have to finish before they graduate and then they have to start with another student. So that, that is one thing that you look at, they like hiring and recruiting younger students. And I want to say something when you're emailing on the person, two things you want to keep in mind. Address them by the correct title, so it's like doctor, because that's very important. And two, like if you're emailing multiple professors, don't send out one email and like CC them. Like you don't want to have, hey, I'm interested in your research and have like email that same generic email to five people. You know, you want to be personal to one professor and be like, hey, I like your research on breast cancer or something. So like try to be personal and do it one-on-one because -on -one. They, they really don't like when you do that chain email. Mm -hmm. And if you um, go to your teacher's office hours, a lot of times either they, even though if they may not have an opening in their lab, they might have colleagues that do. Um, that's how I got my research assistant position. Um, I took a class, talked to the professor, got to know her, and she knew just about every person in that department. So she knew who needed an, an assistant or who didn't. So she kind of, kind of pointed me and gave me a recommendation. And so it's good to get to know your teachers, even though a lot of people say it. <laughs> <laughs> get, to, get to know your teachers. Yeah. Um, after the first semester, do you find that you had more free time? Because like, I feel like now I'm still at that stage of overwhelmed. I don't have time to go find clubs to be involved in you know, things <laughs> like that. Um, it depends on your course load, yeah. uh, your classes, what's required when your exams are. Uh, once you kind of get that down and get your scheduling intact, you know what what subjects you need to study for and how to study for them, when to study for them for exams, you can start spacing out times of um, when you have time to do things. Now, uh, you can join clubs, and a lot of clubs, you know, they're, they're not really, you don't have to be a committed member, and so that's a good thing, but once you become an officer, that does become a commitment a lot of times. So um, a lot of it is about time management and seeing what your friends are doing. See if you can study together and teach each other and learn faster. Um, see what study tactics they use that helps them. Um, but it, a lot of it comes down to time management and seeing what you know you can physically handle. Don't rush into trying to join every single organization all at once. You have four years and you can space it out. Maybe prioritize and see, okay, which ones am I really interested in? Join those, see if you can fit it into your schedule, and then slowly as you see, as you start figuring out how to study, how to organize yourself, how to plan, fit in leisure time, then you can continue joining other ones. Because that's something that my freshman year, I tried to join every club and then I started to realize, oh, maybe this isn't going to be beneficial to me. And then it, it, in the end, you end up being committed to only a certain number of organizations, but you're really actively involved in them. And I think that's more important than just being a member of every single organization. You want to be actively involved in them and even getting that leadership position. Yeah, definitely quality over quantity. Yeah. You don't want to be in 10 organizations and not be active. Definitely be overstretched. Is everyone here pre-med? Every, no. Mm -hmm. two, two of us? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm thinking pre-med or pre-pharmacy. Okay, so pre-health. Yeah, pre okay. mm -hmm. And your major? Uh, criminology, but I'm planning on going to graduate school for forensic science. Ooh. Um, something I will just say um, once more about the first semester. Um, you know, you're, you're coming to UF probably from further away than from Gainesville, correct? It's like new town for all of you. So you're coming to a new town, new school, new culture. It's a complete culture shock. Classes are very different. Right now you're spending a lot of time just trying to get through your days and figure a lot of things out. And it's that culture shock period. It will get a lot easier because after a while, just living you know, in Gainesville and being on campus and going to class and everything, it will start becoming more normal and it will start becoming just very second nature and you won't be expending so much energy just trying to figure out what's the bus I need to take to get over here yeah. or where is that building that I have to go and find or anything like that. Like that's, you know, that takes a lot of energy to, um, to just get settled. And so once you get settled, 
and you start, you know, you got everything down like the back of your hand, you know how to work the buses and you know where everything is on campus, um, it gets a lot easier. And then you'll start, you know, you'll come home and you'll be like, hey, I have energy to look up an organization I want to join, mm -hmm. things like that. So it does get easier in that aspect. Where did you guys make most of your friends? <laughs> I'm having a tough time. <laughs> okay. I only have one friend. I guess we'll go down the road for that. That's fine. All right. It's horrible. I need one friend in this class. Well, now you just made two more friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, lecture halls are definitely hard to do because you sit there for five minutes and then class starts. You sit there for 50 minutes and then you leave. Um, for me, I met most of my friends through extracurriculars. Um, Joining clubs is a way to make friends, but what I find is a lot more helpful is if you're actually, as everyone said, if you're actively involved in the club. Um, a lot of times people kind of get scared or you know intimidated since you know people, it seems like everyone knows each other in a club. And so um, for me, when I started joining clubs, it, it's kind of intimidating, but once you get in and you're actively involved, you're volunteering with your club or you get to know the officers, they kind of, depending on the size of the club, you're kind of a family. So you start making friends, you start getting really close to some of them, and that's where I've met a lot of my friends. Um, for me, a lot of my friends are actually the, all of the officers in my club. So it's, it's definitely one way you can make friends. Um, otherwise, once you get into the smaller classes, uh, that also helps. You'll start working in groups and talking, you know, that's another way you can start making friends. You know, right now all the classes you're in are really big and they're kind of scary. Some of them do get smaller once you start getting into specialized classes. Well, I found most of my fr <coughs> friends throughout the Asian American Student Union. That's, that's an umbrella organization that has five sub-organizations, one for Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, health-related people, and also a freshman mission program where fresh first years, they do go there and they get involved with communities, such as programming communities, they come up with events and make, just bring out people and they celebrate what it means to be Asian American. But you to be honest, yeah, <coughs> he's part of that. But, mm -hmm. but to be honest, I found most of my close friends outside of extracurriculars, it's just, just ironic. My closest friends are actually the people I was a roommate with. My, my broad roommate, I lived on campus my freshman year in 2010 to 2011. I said, Hey, let's move off campus together. He's he's actually one of my closest friends now. He's he's gonna be a lifelong friend for me. And then I found another another potential lifelong friend when I moved off campus for the first time. And then I lived with that person for two months, and then I went back to my original roommate, lived with him for the rest of this time. And then, but yeah, definitely. Whenever you go to a big club meeting and you see, it, it quite it can be quite intimidating because a lot of people are just talking to their people that they already know, but. Don't be afraid. Try to approach them and say, hello, my name is Patty. I am so-and-so. I'd like to get to know you guys a little bit better. Because if you ever want to get to know someone better, just approach them. Hey, let's go out to get lunch or coffee. Make that first move. Because I've, I've also noticed that a lot of people, I met, I, I'm, I've networked a lot, but I had to make the effort and actually approach people first. I, I met most of my friends by actually approaching them first, not them with me. So it can be quite intimidating, but as long as you make the effort, and try being included, they're going to appreciate you. I'm going off what Tommy said, do you guys live on or off campus? Off campus. Off, oh, so yeah, I mean, it become, it's a little easy. Oh, you said? Off campus. What both of you guys say? Off campus? Mm -hmm. Off campus, freshman year. Yeah, off campus, freshman year. I used to live in Beatty, but I got temporary housing, so now I'm in Murphy. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, definitely living on housing, it's, it's a, you get like that friendly atmosphere, it really helps. Maybe yet. I have a really? At least the girls on my floor are campus. very. Like, they don't talk to me. Okay. Yeah. 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 Really? I think it's, it's, it's harder. harder so they they really talk to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. But yeah, I mean, I just there's like um everyone's been saying, <coughs> organizations they really help you. Going to um campus activities, you'll find people there, who are willing to socialize like um. Gator rates on Fridays at the rights. Joining, I mean, joining an organization 
something just find something you'll like so you have you find that same common ground with someone else. I actually met most of my close friends in my research lab. You spend so much time within these four walls and you all share an interest, whether it be in medicine or in law or in psychology or anything. And you'll find that throughout your years you're taking similar classes, so you're kind of a support system for each other. Someone may take a class before you do, and then they may be able to help you in your class in the future. And when you apply to med school, grad school, law school, they'll be there, they'll be going through the same process as you are, or they may have already if they're older, and they can also help you. So I think you make the best friends within those either organizations or research labs or whatever it may be that have the same interest. That are all like in that same topic, I guess, or field. Um, I started actually living off campus, so I just assumed okay, if you're on campus and you meet so many people that are freshmen, you'll be fine. So I was actually a little worried about that myself, but yeah, I mean, it just kind of happens. You just have to be like Tony said, be friendly. Like I think I have way more people, even if it's just like you know talking about the class initially, like. That is the common thing. I'm like, hey, how was that test? Like, that was horrible, <laughs> especially just like chemistry. <laughs> like, you just bond over that. And you may think that with lecture hall friends, you're never going to see them again because it was just one class. But especially if they're the same major as you, you're going to keep seeing them. <laughs> and you're actually going to get closer. Like, I have some friends that I took like Chem 1, Chem 2, Bio 1, Bio 2, and now they're in like physics with me. And like, you kind of just keep seeing Wait, them. You're a sophomore, though. Yeah. I kind of just <laughs> kept taking you did all your science classes. Like there's more to go. There's I mean, more. There's plenty <laughs> more. There's plenty more. Wow. You can. If you take full summer classes, you keep going. Did you take summer classes? I took one, uh, one summer class. Yeah. You can. I'm sorry. For people that are oh, for people no, you're doing well, don't worry about it. For people that are really far ahead. You have four years, like you have plenty yeah. of time. Also, like don't get so frustrated with like, oh my gosh, I have to join all these clubs and stuff. It is the first semester of your freshman year. You're gonna figure it out, and it's gonna happen. Like you just have to have a plan and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Like prioritize, like you were saying. Um, try to accomplish those things. It's not gonna be like high school, where you're doing all these things and you know your friends from kindergarten, but you can still make that effort, and it'll work. You know, college friendships will really last. You just have to make the effort to meet people. And don't be afraid to join in the spring. Um, <coughs> I know, like during my freshman year, I always thought like, oh, spring semester is just a continuation of you know, winter and everyone already knows each other, they're not really taking new club members or anything. Clubs are usually, you know, spring, it's a fresh start, you, they take on new members, some members left during the winter, so don't be scared to, you know, just jump on in. Even mid-semester, you can just go to a meeting, you know, meet new people, they're not gonna say, you can come to our first meeting, you can't join now. I mean, most clubs are not like that, you know, just come in and join, unless they have dues or you have to rush or something, but that's more like sororities and fraternities. But um, also, find a club that you have interest in. Usually, as you know, everyone said, if you have an in similar interest, you're likely going to be in similar majors. Or if you're pre-health, join a pre-health club. They're all going to be taking the same classes as you, so you can all help each other out. Um, and a lot of clubs have big little programs, so they're going to match you to someone who's probably taken your classes, who can help you, you know, with your future classes and. Kind of just introduce you to their friends and other littles that they have, and so it's kind of like a little mentor program within the organizations. But yeah. I can also share my experience because mine is actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. um, so I took the version of first year Florida class my freshman year, my very first semester, <coughs> um, and I sat next to one girl who seemed very nice the first day, and then the second day she scared the heck out of me. So I decided to sit on the opposite side of class, the next class, and I wound up staying to, next to a person who became my best friend. And we became really good friends because after class, there was nine Einstein bagels in like, the same building, and so she would always go and get coffee, and I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go and get a bagel. And so then we'd wind up just having coffee or bagel or eating together. Um, and then she had class near where I lived, so we would walk together and then kind of part ways. And now we're, we're best friends, like lifelong friends, how Tommy was saying, 
And we look back on that moment, and she's like, yeah, I kind of, like, followed you to your apartment, even though it was not, like, creepy in that way, but, <laughs> but like, because it was, like, near where her class was, she took, like, a, a kind of different route than she would because she wanted to walk and talk with me, and, like, I would go and, like, eat because I wanted to, like, talk to her. So it was kind of funny in that aspect. Like, you just kind of have to make the effort to be social with someone, and then she introduced me to one of her friends from high school, and he introduced me to one of his roommates, and then... I brought one of my friends into the group, and now a couple of them are getting married next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just really funny how the web of people's connections and the way they work out, like you will eventually find that group of friends that you hang out with. So mm -hmm. if someone invites you out, like, hey, I have friends, you know, we're going to go and go to this restaurant or something, you know, take that opportunity because you never know who you'll meet there in that social, mm -hmm. social situation. So even beyond extracurriculars and beyond work experiences, mm -hmm still just, you know, when those social situations do pop up. So if your roommate has, you know, friends who she's going out with and she invites you, take her up on that opportunity to go and meet some other people because you never know who you're just going to hit it off with. That's a big thing. That, that's, yeah. Um, you know, studying is important and grades are important, but um, don't be afraid to, you know, get out there and meet new people, go out with your friends, go out to dinner, or go to the mall, hang out. It's, it's a really good way to meet people. Um, I've learned that it's a good, you should say yes to a lot of those opportunities rather than no. Because I know I used to be really kind of shy, intimidated by meeting people. And now is really the time to do it because a lot of freshmen are here trying to make friends. Mm -hmm. So it gets, it's hard by senior year. Senior year, everyone's got their whole little clique and their group and they know what they're doing Friday and Saturday night with those people. And so it gets more difficult down the road. But now everybody here is new. Everybody is new to games. So everybody is trying to find friends because all their friends from kindergarten are back home or somewhere else at FSU. Maybe because I feel like a lot of freshmen already have their little groups. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. My high school followed me here. I swear. <laughs> like, yeah. So many well, kids came here. Really? Seabreeze High School. Well, yeah, not necessarily C my high school, but you know Seabreeze? Volusia County? Yeah. yeah. Deland High. Okay. <laughs> rivals. Oh. Least football labs. We're rivals with everyone. Mainland, Seabreeze, anyone on the East Coast. Yeah, well, basically, Daytona yeah. followed me here. Oh, the Seabreeze, okay. Mainland, Creek people. Oh, there's tons of Seabreeze. Oh, so many Creek kids. <laughs> <laughs> no one's here. like everybody already has friends here keep in mind that um, even though you're taking gen ed classes right now there might not all be freshmen in there there might be sophomores there might be juniors so it might seem like people have their friends and have their clicks but they might not be first semester freshmen or maybe they started in summer and they have a semester on you things of that nature or they so might be seniors. again yeah or they <laughs> might be seniors who for whatever reason saved that gen ed for the end or they didn't realize they had to take that class and they delayed it graduation. Happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. It happens. You know, all different scenarios. So again you can't compare yourself to other people, you just gotta focus on you and, and find those people that you can make connections with. Yeah, you said you have one friend in each class. There's nothing wrong with having one okay, friend well, in each in class. My class I don't have Okay. Oh, there's nothing wrong. Actually, no. More like in three of my classes. You want to establish like a so good connection. We can be friends. We can be friends. We're all friends. Let's exchange contact information after. <laughs> okay. I feel like it's hard too because like everyone's on a different schedule. So even yeah. the people you meet, it's like, oh, what are you doing Friday night? Uh, I have this, this, and this, or I'm going home, and yeah. it's like you can't seem to find people that. Can spend time with you when you have time. Honestly, like the struggle you guys are going through, I like. I feel like we can all share with that. Oh, like, yeah. I I would sit in my in my lecture class and be like, okay, so there's either people from high school and there are friends, or it's like you have this a lot of time before lecture starts. You can't really meet people, or people are unfriendly, or they really don't want to talk to you. They're in their whole world. So it's like you find like all these obstacles against you. But at the end of the day, you've got to realize that there are like a lot of people just like you because it was it happened to us. And it, it still yeah. happens when I'm a senior. <laughs> I I meet new people in my classes still to this day by ask by asking, Oh, well, what do you think of that test? Or do you wanna yeah. study for the next test together? <coughs> just little things like that. Like, 
they my, maybe they may not be like my lifelong friend, but they'll be my friend in that class, and there's nothing wrong with that. It makes the class, you know, you yeah. look forward to the class more if you have someone to kind of share that stress with, and especially with like a class you're struggling with, it helps to make a friend in there to kind of, you know, talk about it, you know, if you didn't get something and you can clarify with them, it just makes it better. You look forward to it more, I think, like, at least I've experienced it. Yeah, study groups are the way to go. Yeah. <clears throat> because you can just even post in an online forum if you have like a class group somewhere. You know, hey, does anybody want to study at this time? I'll be at the library and then people will show up. Mm. And then not only that, but then you're attracting people who have good study skills and mm. aren't going to be the type of people that drag you down in classes. And then you'll be able to connect that way. And that's just creating your own little event. Um, so doing it on your own time. So then, you know, Thursday at 6 is when I can meet, and then you'll meet the other people who can meet at Thursday at mm -hmm. 6, and then the schedule issue doesn't become such a problem. I know there's a, there's a Facebook group for like every gen ed class, for every, you guys have, right? Because I know when I was, did you guys have when I was a freshman? Like, uh, no. I know my for every year. class yeah, like a, for every a Facebook year. group. Um, 10 classes usually do. 10 classes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bio class. classes are okay. in. No, bio, I don't think I have. No, but for Cam, for sure. Cam usually has them. But there's groups on Facebook um, so far. within your year or like textbook exchange groups or you know. don't, don't you guys I mean I, I'm sorry I went to UCF as an undergrad and so we had different things there so but you guys have Sakai here right isn't yeah. that yeah. an online forum where you can post yeah. things yeah. you can um, I think most of them use that right no it's a widely used a lot of students open no, that test it's not really widely used no, oh, at UCF we would use that all the time. That would be actually nice because it's right there, like yeah. directly related to the class. We had Blackboard though, which is better. I thought no, Blackboard sorry. was shutting down. <laughs> I used Blackboard for, oh, like when I did dual enrollment for Blackboard. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't. I think Blackboard was like upgrading or merging or something. I think Blackboard was merging because that's why we switched to Sakai because I heard somewhere, um, like one of my lecturers said, like, we used to be on Blackboard at UF, and then they had to switch to Sakai because they weren't using it anymore or something like that. Well, I don't know. I thought Blackboard was better, but that's just... <laughs> um, but yeah, if there are forums like that online, you can definitely utilize those too, or on Facebook or things of that nature. Also, just there's so many campus events going on, try going to some of those events that are going on, such as a lot of cultural groups have their dance shows or cultural shows. It just gets so just go to those have shows. One for the pre college students, I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, he's gonna talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> and, and there's always something happening on Friday nights at the rights. It's called Gator Nights. Mm -hmm. That I remember my freshman year, I used to meet a lot of people there. I would just mm -hmm. be approaching people. He has to go and I'll meet some Brazilian. He's from, he was a grad student. He was, he was paid to go to to do research, which was pretty nice. And then. Yeah, I try to make it go every gear nice because I just love it's just, that's easiest that's one of the easiest ways for me to make meet people gear nights. It's always and, happening every Friday. And it does take some work on your part. Um, don't be afraid to initiate conversation like Tommy said earlier. I know like my best one of my best friends right now, I met her about a year and a half ago in a club and she didn't talk. She was super shy. She still is super shy to people that don't know her. But you know, I got to know her, talked to her, initiated conversation, and then we started texting and we talked. And now we're, you know, best friends. We're planning a trip up north during homecoming weekend and you know, we hit it off. We, and there's a little group of us where I'm going up and so don't be afraid to start a conversation, even if they seem kinda of shy or, you know, not welcoming. You never know where it can lead you. Um, works with friends, works with opportunities, works with research, works with your professors. You, it, it's great. It's a great skill to have. Any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a list of questions that like possibly you guys could be interested in. So one of the things is how do you deal with homesickness? So maybe do you guys experience homesickness? <laughs> <laughs> home a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a very you know big issue. <laughs> okay, so. okay. Um, I freshman year I did go home a lot. Every weekend. How far do you live? Yeah, no, I. Oh, okay. I live like six hours. Yeah, me too. So six hours away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm two hours away. Two hours is not. Yeah, you did. It's not bad. I don't have a car. By second year, you'll be going maybe every other week. 
freshman year. I try not to go that much because I want to get used to it. Like, yeah. I don't have to go. Yeah. Just plan events or dinner outings or something on the weekends. That way, it kind of, you have something to look forward to mm-hmm. staying in Gainesville or like, Go to a football game when there is a football game. I know there's a lot of away games this semester. I'm sorry. I'm being friends with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know I'm messy. sure you have friends. <laughs> my roommate. Yeah. There you go. There's nothing wrong. I've gone to many games with just my roommate, and it's still yeah. fun. Like you, and you can talk to the people who sit next to you yeah. at the <laughs> game, and everyone is. Everyone's like, friendly at the yeah, game. Yeah, but they're close to you. Yeah, everyone's in a good mood at the game. Language yeah. I guess it's anxiety or something. Like, I don't know. She just will not leave the room. Or I try to get her to go out, and she's just like, no, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I just have to meet someone. It's lots of I mean, like, I have a lot of friends from back home that yeah. I still hang out with, so it's not too bad. And they go home a lot too. Find find stuff around town to do in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once you start. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Oh, but there is. Oh, but there is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At first, it feels that way, but then you learn about oh, this really good restaurant that mm-hmm. only Gainesville has. Like, there's this restaurant called The Top. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like the food is great, oh, yeah. and you can only get that in Gainesville. It's a cultural experience. Yeah. <laughs> so Blue little beer. things like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be going to Midtown or going downtown to a club. Like, there's there's really cute restaurants downtown. Just plan. A night to go eat dinner with your roommate. And check out check out the um, the Gainesville Cultural Affairs page because there's always a downtown festival. There's, oh, uh, yes. there's always like free music Fridays out on Bo Diddley Plaza yeah. mm-hmm. from April through October. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the one of the largest um, arts and crafts festivals in the southeast is happening um, the weekend prior to Thanksgiving, yeah. um, and it's it's like forty thousand vendors. There's actually um, a lot of festivals starting up right yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a lot of outdoor um, things as well. We have Hitchitochne. Hitchitochne, um, Jenny Springs, um, Fanning Springs. Um, you also have Devil's Millhopper, which Devil's is a great, great walking and outdoor area. I just Northwest. learned recently about some Lachua Trail that I'm hiking this Sunday. With the, yep, the Lachua so, Trail, mm-hmm. all, all of those. My boys are going to know that. Is it the really big one? Yes. Oh, no, no, I just know there's, yeah. there's I got totally lost in wild horses there. Wild, <laughs> there's there's wild horses in Paints Prairie. There's alligators in Paints Prairie, too. Pinks-Berry. There's alligators in the creek yeah. right out the door, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> but this is up close and personal with 20 or 30. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's also a really cool movie theater that um, Gator Cinemas, if you're low on cash, Ooh. that I go to all the time. Dollars, $2. And it's only $2 for movies. The movies came out right like a couple of months ago. Where is that? It's right next to I the, don't know. It's, it's right next to the mall where Jason's Deli is. Oh, is it? I don't even remember. It was there and before. On Tues- they just yeah, they it. just reopened it. And on Tuesdays, it's only a dollar for the movies. Oh, yeah, no, and a for popcorn and Andrew. And it's new <laughs> movies? It's What's that? New like, movies? They're not new. They've already been in the theater. Yeah, but, they're just uh, not, they're not new movies. They've been in the theater a few months right ago. Oh, so like if you didn't get a chance. I haven't even seen them. So we're going to find a theater. What about new movies? What is it for? Um, I don't know. They usually have like a couple really random ones that like I've never heard of. So maybe that might be what you're thinking of. I think there, isn't there a drive-in? Or like right now, there's like the corn maze. Oh, the corn Ooh, maze. the corn maze is right now. Or and the Alachua County Fair. I've never been, but yeah. there's a lot of little experiences. Like yeah, it might not be the the fair from Miami, but it's still <laughs> the same thing. Like those fairs travel Just everywhere. What's the It's um. I've never been. I might be going on Saturday. I heard Saturday's the last day. Maze. I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's like a there. maze. I want to do that. With know, like the maze stocks, I'm guessing. Whoa, 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 are you talking about the maze? Have you been there? Yes. Talk okay. about it. So <laughs> there's, there. a, there's a few farms that do this. It's actually, they grow the corn. It's corn and oh, it's a maze cool. like you think of in the movies where you get lost in it. Mm-hmm. Um, during the day, they give you a little map, which really doesn't help. And you just walk around and get lost in mm-hmm. a giant corn maze. At night on the weekends, they have chainsaws. They have, they have <laughs> workers go in there in scary costumes and chainsaws, and it's like Halloween horror nights, but in the wild because you don't know where you're going. It's and there's cool. no end. Um, it's very cool to go with even like one or two friends, so you can latch onto each other as you're running away, screaming bloody murder. Um, I had a lot of fun my freshman year. Um, 
there was a group of us and there was like a chainsaw guy and he was chasing us and then he turned off his chainsaw and we thought it was my roommate like screaming run but it turned out it was a chainsaw guy once we knew he turned on his chainsaw again that was that was great but it's not like Halloween Horror Night because you don't like enter at one spot and leave at one spot it's like a continual maze that you have to find your way in and out so it's it's thrilling like it's it's really exciting and then there's like animals and hay what hay, hay rides punching patches and little scary trails but you know, he's selling it really hard right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I might go. It's, yeah. it's just something yeah, you don't find in a lot of places. Like, I've this is one of those that. places that you have to be at to yeah. have it. It's Something I also recommend is to join something like Groupon or Living Social because then you can find really good deals yes. around town about really cool things that you didn't even know existed. For instance, I convinced my boyfriend to go on a Friday date night with me to do canvas painting. Oh my god. It's like two, two for 20 colors? Yes, quarter yeah. colors. It's like two for 24 dollars. We're gonna be painting like a fall tree or something like that. So there's really cool little places like that as well. So, and then that's just like right online. It's like almost got like your social things ready made for you and at a deal. Another interesting thing is Crystal River is about an hour, hour and a half away. It is the only, one of the only, uh, one or the only, uh, places you can swim with manatees and it, winter is coming up. Crystal River, clear water, swim with manatees. It's a cool and this is, this is about the, the best time to go because the water temperature in the Gulf is now much colder and so, and it's the spring, so they need uh, 72 degree temperatures year round. Mm -hmm. And so it's 72 degrees year round in, the that, in, that, in the springs area. So they gather there during the, the winter months, mm -hmm. and then they'll go out to the ocean, to the Gulf, during the summer months, but it's nice and warm again. Yeah. And um, so that you'll see hundreds and of them. Even if, you don't, even if you don't, even if you don't, it depends. There's different like travel groups or private tour groups that do it. Sometimes There's they have living social. For, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I Groupon swear, it's, it's on Groupon, and it's there's like one version that's like for twenty four dollars, but I think that's only like an hour snorkeling with them. And then there's like a forty dollar one where you can like snorkel and dive with them or something. Yeah, I've done so that just a before. It's, they're a lot bigger than you think they are once you're in the water with them. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to do that, you can also go kayaking or canoeing in the springs, awesome. and that's sometimes a little bit cheaper. There's a lot of springs out that. Um, if you head west from here, there's a lot of springs out there, and a lot of the manatees come into the springs. It's also Lake Wabur. Yeah. Is, is, there, a is there a crew team? Yes, yes, there is a crew team. Really? Oh, okay. My friend was in crew. I might join. My friend was in crew no. as an They're always... Yeah, but no one knows anything. You guys are like the first people that know about the crew yeah. team. Because I've asked around. And I've like, seen them in Turlington. Yeah. They actually like... The ro with the roll machines. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen them practicing at Lake Wabur. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never been to Lake they're really intense. Like, why would I have to go away nice? It's a lot of fun. And it's completely free, right? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And you can bring a guest. Is it too late to join the crew team? You would have to find one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not. I, different sports have different seasons. Yeah. So you might have to... Let me ask my friend. I might have an answer by the end of the session. <laughs> um, also, just hitting up uh, Southwest Rec for certain fitness classes, too. It's oh, yeah. a lot of people in that as well. Those are really fun, though. I've gone to one class. Yeah. How'd you feel last time? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fun. Just haven't worked out in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Just be sure to include I feel like something. I don't for anything, and I don't, don't really have, have a hectic schedule. I don't know. I guess it's just because it's my first semester. Yeah, it's yeah. exhausting just going through the day. Just thinking that you have to do laundry or cook something. <laughs> um, it's like, it's like back home, you're like, Maybe still I'm like mom. yeah, I'm, don't even play. The other, I had to do like three loads of laundry yesterday. I procrastinate so bad. I mean, honestly, you're on the oh, same yeah. boat with everybody yeah. on campus. That campus struggle. But it gets easier, yeah. but you will still struggle. Yeah. Your last year, the response yeah. like, oh, I do have to do the dishes. They won't just like magically get clean yeah. by your parents or something. Like, yeah, I don't know. Because my sleeping schedule is out of whack. I have a nap where I love to nap. I was a nap. My naps are not 30 minutes long. They're two hours long. I thought my two hour naps were bad. I can't nap. I was a nap where my first year was like a three hour nap. Yeah, I was a nap where my first year was like a three hour nap. Yeah, I was a nap where my first year was like a three hour nap. Yeah, I was a nap where my first year was like a three hour nap. 
can't be an athlete. You have to be able to set your schedule yeah. on yeah. sleeping, going to bed at a reasonable time and waking up at yeah. a reasonable time. Yeah. <laughs> and coffee doesn't help either. No, it doesn't. Never does. Mother told me that. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm a mute channel at this point. So. Do you, what time do you usually go to bed, though? Lately, like 1230. And when you wake up? Eight. And you still nap for four hours in the middle of the day? You're really good enough. Yeah, that's Maybe a good seven hours. Maybe plan something that's that's during the time you nap. stay busy, too, because if yeah. you've got four hours ahead of you where you're like, oh, I've got nothing to do, oh, I'm going to yeah. some coffee. <laughs> that's when you're going to fall asleep. You're going to take that four hour so nap. So even if, you like pick, yeah. even if it's just like picking yeah, up a hobby apartment. by yourself, like do scrapbooking or something, like mm -hmm. keep yourself awake or um, find it, like a TV show that you like, <coughs> or anything to kind of keep yourself busy through the day. We'll yeah. avoid yeah. those naps and then... Have you the I really try. It's just like I only go to my room. Control at this point, like I'm just sit on the couch and I knock out. <laughs> Maybe go to the library. Yeah. Force yourself to even if you're caught up on your reading, read ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like that you way. You can nap in the library too. Yeah, it's happened to me. I just tried to avoid that. No, no but it's already happened to me. I knocked out in the hub the other day. But you'll take a short nap though. It won't be four hours. That's It'll really be like three hours. That's you sleep. better than four. Yeah, I can sleep anywhere at any time. I can never sleep like anywhere on public. Like, oh, like, me neither. If the Even sun is up, I won't sleep. Yeah, exactly. I feel like this is not the time to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I just, even if I'm super tired and I'm Yeah, that's out. why, like, staying up late doesn't work very well because the sun's up and then yeah. you get up anyway. Mm -hmm. I just go to bed time like <laughs> So, crew season is all year long, and I'm asking him about joining late. He said sometimes they do take people when they join late, but I'm asking to see if he takes, if, when they take new members every semester, so give me a few more minutes for that. So to deal with homesickness, I suggest just stay busy. Include yeah, stay busy. Include something that'll make you happy in your weekend schedule. Like if you, I don't know, if you like to go shopping, that's what I I go to Target and just walk around. I love Target. I love Target. So you just just find something that'll make you happy and like disconnect from school, but find something that you can do in Gainesville and plan it so that you don't force yourself to go home every weekend. Because going home every weekend is not going to make it easier on you. I have a roommate who is a junior right now, and she goes home every weekend. Yeah. And you, you don't want it to get to that point. Because she's missing out on UF experiences. She says she doesn't belong at UF. And you don't want to feel that way. If, if, if you force yourself to stay here, and you get involved on the weekends, and you, even if it means going to Oaks Mall, it's probably not the best mall you've ever been to. But it's huge. something, I and mean, it's, it's it, it'll grow on you. This mall's huge. Oh my gosh, I get lost in it. But that it, is very weird. I'm yeah. <laughs> from a small this, town, like I'm from a really small town. This mall is so much nicer. Oh no, yeah. Aventura Mall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I thought my mall was big, and then I came here. Wait, are you from So just plan something with a, even if it's with that one friend, plan something, a dinner here, and then you have, you've committed to something on the weekend in Gainesville, and you so no you longer can't have to go home. <laughs> um, I don't know why I thought of this, but how did you deal through the winter, like walking to classes in the oh, winter? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you're from Volusia County, they get cold there? Not this cold. What? <laughs> We're, it's it's not about 10 now. degrees yeah. colder here. You're, you're on the coast, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty cool, but we it gets colder. It cold like, it got lost in 2072. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So this, right now, is horrible. Start, start bringing your winter jackets. Yeah, bundle up. It'll probably get layers. Yeah. I thought my legs were going to fall off this morning. The, the trick I'm is gonna... layers, because I'm it does get like, hot. Layers. It gets hot in the middle of the Yeah. So you want to just, you want to shed some layers. I'm sorry to tell you this, but dead dead on middle of the winter, there will be, you know, solid ice on your grass, and if, and there are no, days yeah, where okay. it goes below slightly. No, no, no. It goes <laughs> below 32. It will yeah. go below 32 yeah. at night, and you better pray that it doesn't rain, uh -huh. like during the day. <laughs> yeah. Pray that your heater doesn't break. <laughs> but it's nice. It, yeah, we it kind of get to experience the seasons, and that's not something yeah. that Florida so, really is very famous for. So, like, I mean, it's. it's Compared to other states, it's probably not really real. Yeah, like do but um, mm. kind of enjoy it. I, I actually like the like look forward to I the weather cooling down. You can actually wear winter wear. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I surf, so I go home just to surf sometimes. <laughs> 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 
so it's, it won't be like constant. Usually we'll have like two full days yeah. and a hot day and then another yeah. full day. That makes it worse. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it will oscillate. This day. It will oscillate. It will Airborne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you guys sick in freshman year? What's up? How many times did you guys get sick in freshman year? I've gotten sick three times. I haven't. Take like Airborne. Airborne. It works. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sick about um, once it's a year. It's just like a yeah, yeah, vitamin supplement kind of thing. It sounds like every time. Just be really careful oh, about like oh, what you're touching. That's what it's like. Wash your hands yeah. frequently because yeah. don't put your hands on your face. Yes, yeah. don't put <laughs> your hands on your face. That's something that I had to get used to. Also, is like you're sitting at these desks yeah. that hundreds of other mm -hmm. people have sat at, and. How often do you think those desks get cleaned? At least like in high school or something, your teacher would be like, here's the shaving cream, and you'd sit there and clean your desk, but here they don't get cleaned very often, so avoid like touching too much and I'm touching your face, or I would bite my nails and that probably wasn't great, so um, trying to- Your shots are that. free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, going, going to Southwest Rock and working out and trying to stay fit and healthy and mm -hmm. making sure you're eating your meals every eating day healthy. and eating healthy, that will all help and contribute. Making sure you're getting your sleep, all that contributes yeah, to your immune system. Um, oh. So one of the things is, um, what resources are available on campus to get help? So we have a lot of resources, actually. We have a lot of free resources, like tutoring services. I know there's a lot of centers. There's a lot of paid centers, but there's also like free ones. Like I don't know if you guys know Broward. Broward teaching it was amazing. Like it helped me get through calculus. I like, love them. Yeah. Calculus. So calculus, they're amazing at calculus. They have physics, chemistry. They have a lot of courses. Yeah, they do. You can look on their website, and these are paid tutors, but it's free for us, and they're really skilled at you know helping us either with homework or like general concepts. <coughs> There's also the OLC or something like that for chemistry. CLS. 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 I never did it. CLC. 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 Those are your um, TAs. So your TAs are there. So we do have a lot of free services if you guys don't want to do the paid ones. I assume you guys don't like the paid ones. They always give you flyers, so. Tutoring Aside from campus resources, make sure you guys use um, your discussion classes. I know yeah. some, like for Chem 1, it's not required for you to go to your discussion class. Oh, really? Yeah. No, it's not. It's not required. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do. Oh, we have places in there. So. Yeah, so. and depends on the teacher. Yeah, I have Williams, so we have. To there's a lot of there's a lot of classes that you'll have <coughs> where discussion is not required, but it's such a great resource yeah. that people miss <laughs> out on it. And you're like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't wake up that early. But they're there, and they will help you. So make sure you go. Or if you have a paper, there's calculus all the time. There's a writing center. Yeah, there's a writing center. Broward has writing center too. Because it's kind of difficult to adjust to college papers. Like, I mean, if it's a small paper, maybe not. But if it's like a longer, you know, like term paper that's due that's a big chunk of your grade, you might want to go to the writing center and make sure that you're writing on a college level, which I'm sure you got in here. Like, probably. <laughs> but just, it's good to have someone read over your work. And yes. Suggest tutoring zone because I know I don't I want to get a bad grade in calculus and like my second exam didn't go very well so should I I, I, I like go to Broward a lot. I I did tutoring zone for calculus like it just totally depends on you and like it's a personal decision. Yeah. I did it I felt like it did help me because again you know in lecture I didn't feel like I was understanding everything I did use Broward. I did use tutoring zone also, okay. but it helped me you know so just you know talk to your friends see like. What you possibly are doing, maybe that will help you, but it definitely helps. Yeah. Like it, it's extra practice, and yeah. they go over things. If you think it'll build your confidence up, yeah. then I think you should go for it. I mean, I I did it for statistics, which you guys probably think is super easy, but I wanted to go in there feeling like I fully <laughs> comprehended what I learned. So I did tutoring zone, and it, it's also if you have the means for it, because you do have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. it's, what is it, twenty five? Twenty five dollars, I think, for review. So is it just a review, or is it like? Um, it's 